A salt is an ionic compound consisting of a cation other than H+, and an anion other than OH-. Here we'll show you all about hydrolysis of ions in salt. A salt can either be acidic, neutral, or basic depending on the hydrolysis of its ions. We're sometimes given the formula for a salt and asked to determine whether it is acidic, basic, or neutral when dissolved in water. There is a step-by-step -step process we can use to determine whether a given salt is acidic, basic, or neutral in aqueous solution. Step 1 is to write a dissociation equation for the salt in order to determine what its cation and anion are. Step 2 is to eliminate any spectator ions. Remember spectator cations are the positive ions of group 1, or alkali metals, and group 2, or alkaline earth metals. So these ions are always neutral in aqueous solution. The spectator anions are the top 5 ions on the right side of the acid table. They are perchlorate, iodide, bromide, chloride, and nitrate. These ions do not react with water and are always neutral in aqueous solution. We can list all the spectator cations and spectator anions in a single box and use this whenever we have to determine whether a salt is acidic, basic, or neutral. It is a good idea to memorize these in order to save time later. At this point, you may want to pause the video, take a screenshot of this, and print it. Once we have eliminated the spectator ions, the third step is to locate the remaining ion or ions on the acid table. If an ion is not a spectator ion, it means it must undergo either acid or base hydrolysis or both. In chemistry 12, these are the four cations that hydrolyze. They all undergo acid hydrolysis. Notice the three hydrated cations, iron 3, chromium 3, and aluminum, can be depicted either in their hydrated or hexaaqual form, as shown here, or in the form of simple ions with a 3 plus charge. When you dissociate a salt, you're likely to see these cations depicted in this simple form. Just keep in mind that if you need to write a hydrolysis equation for one of these three, you must convert them to their hydrated form. The other hydrolyzing cation, ammonium, always appears as NH4+, or in compound formulas, as NH4. Now for anions. Anions are on the right side of the acid table. We start by looking at anions that undergo only base hydrolysis. That's these ions here. Excluding the spectator ions on the top right of this table, these are all the ions on the right with a negative charge, whose formulas do not start with an H. Antiprotic anions are the negative ions on the right side, whose formulas start with an H. Antiprotic anions undergo both acid and base hydrolysis. What we have to do with these is to determine which hydrolysis is predominant. How to do that is shown on the video Hydrolysis of Amphiprotic Anions. Here are the amphiprotic anions. Notice their formulas all start with an H, and they all have negative charges. The fourth step of our process comes into play in cases where both the cation and anion of the salt hydrolyze. If both the cation and anion hydrolyze, we compare the value of the Ka for the cation to the value of Kb for the anion in order to decide which hydrolysis is predominant. We'll go through an example of this later. 
Now we'll go through a few examples working with salt. We're asked to determine whether the salt calcium nitrite with the formula CaNO2,2 is acidic, basic, or neutral when dissolved in water. The first step in our process is to write the dissociation equation for the salt. We start with the formula CaNO2,2. It dissociates into a calcium ion, Ca2+, and two nitrite or NO2- ions. The second step in the process is to eliminate any spectator ions. Because it's a member of group 2, the calcium ion is a spectator ion, so it can be eliminated. Now that we've eliminated the spectator ion, the next step is to locate the remaining ion, nitrite, on the table. The nitrite ion is on the right side of the acid table, in the weak base section. It does not start with an H, so it is not amphiprotic. It undergoes only base hydrolysis. Therefore, we can say that NO2- is basic. Because Ca2 plus is a neutral spectator and NO2 minus is basic, we can say that the salt CaNO2 2 or calcium nitrite is basic. So now we've answered this question. Here's another example. We're asked to determine whether the salt potassium iodide with the formula Ki is acidic, basic, or neutral when dissolved in water. We start by writing the dissociation equation for Ki. It is Ki gives K plus plus I minus. Now we eliminate spectator ions. K plus is in group 1, so it is a neutral spectator which can be eliminated. And I minus is one of the top 5 ions on the right side of the acid table, so it is also a neutral spectator which can be eliminated. So both the cation and the anion of this salt are neutral spectator ions. Therefore, the salt Ki is neutral. Here's another example. We're asked to determine whether the salt chromium-3 nitrate with the formula CrNO33 is acidic, basic, or neutral when dissolved in water. We'll start by writing the dissociation equation for CrNO33. We get the cation Cr3+, or chromium-3, and the anion NO3-, nitrate. Cr3+, is not in group 1 or 2 on the periodic table, so it is not a spectator cation. But the anion, NO3- is one of the top five neutral spectator ions on the right side of the table, so it can be eliminated. Going back to Cr3+, Cr3+, or chromium-3, is one of the acidic cations. So we can say that Cr3+, is acidic. Because Cr3 plus is acidic and NO3 minus is a neutral spectator, we can say the salt CrNO3 3 is acidic. Here's one more example. We're asked to determine whether the salt ammonium oxalate with the formula NH42C2O4 is acidic, basic, or neutral when dissolved in water. We start by writing the dissociation equation for NH42C2O4. So we have the cation NH4+, and the anion C2O4-. The cation NH4+, is one of the four acidic cations on the left side of the acid table. So we can say that NH4 plus is acidic. 
The anion C2O4 2 minus is found on the right side of the acid table in the weak base section. So we can say that C2O4 2 minus is basic. We can see that neither the cation nor the anion of this salt are spectators. They both hydrolyze. Remember, if both the cation and anion hydrolyze, we compare the value of the Ka for the cation to the value of Kb for the anion in order to determine which hydrolysis is predominant. So we compare the Ka of NH4 plus with the Kb of C2O4 2 minus. Here, we'll start by finding the value of Kb for the oxalate ion, C2O4 2 minus. We locate the ion C2O4 2 minus on the right side of the acid table. This is the row we'll work with in order to find Kb. Remember the Kb of a species is Kw divided by the Ka of its conjugate acid. The conjugate acid of C2O4 2 minus is HC2O4 minus. The value of Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And the value of Ka for HC2O4 minus is 6.4 times 10 to the negative 5th. This appears in the acid table on the right end of the row for hydrogen oxalate or HC2O4 minus. So the value of Kb is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 6.4 times 10 to the negative 5th, which comes out to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. So we can summarize by saying that the value of Kb for C2O4 2 minus is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. Now we'll find the value of Ka for the cation, NH4+. The value of Ka for NH4+, can be found directly on the right side of the row for NH4+. It is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. We see that the Ka for the cation is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th, and Kb for the anion is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. So the value of Ka for the cation is greater than the value of Kb for the anion. Therefore, the salt NH42C2O4 is acidic. And now we've answered this question. So in summary, by knowing how ions hydrolyze, we can find out whether any given salt is acidic, basic, or neutral when dissolved in water. Thank you.